Hey, first of all, th thank you so much for coming. Um, having been at Cedar Falls since 1995, some of these things that we're going to look at tonight as coaches, we've been dreaming about and talking about forever. And with the pass of the bond in the school, and then working with the architects and our administration and asking them to make sure that we take care of the aquatic center and give us the opportunity for this performance center. Uh, they came through with flying colors as you're gonna see. And that, that's the exciting part of it for us. So basically what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna give everybody in here and I'm gonna kind of assume that some of you haven't seen some of this information and we'll review the aquatic center and the plans in detail. We'll talk about how that's gonna tie in to the new high school. We'll look at the performance center, what's involved with that. Uh, we'll look at the summary and the goals of those things. We have several interviews in there from key people that we'll play some videos for you to have. And then finally, we'll summarize and talk about uh, the costs. And at the very end, if you have questions, we'll have a panel of people come up to answer some key questions for everybody. So one of the questions we have right away is about the stadium. When we passed the bond, the stadium was not in the original bond. Fortunately, the bids came in under what we had hoped that permitted us to bring the stadium into the existing project, which is a tremendous thing because otherwise we'd be standing up here talking about three key projects. So the stadium obviously is gonna give us a chance to have soccer, home events, track and field home events, football home events, and also some band events, among other things. So having that stadium in place is gonna be a great opportunity for all of us. This is a picture that I'm finding that a lot of people haven't necessarily seen at this time. And this is the whole campus view. And obviously, you can, everybody can make out the stadium right here, the practice fields. But what I wanna focus on right here is if you look at this section right in through here, as you drive on 27th Street, those were the two, double two stories of what was going up first with the new high school. The larger part in fr front was the auditorium that you see over in here. And I want everybody to kind of focus on this area right in here. This is where I'm gonna go to the next slide and show you where the athletics part is and how that ties into our two new structures. And that's this slide right here. We know that we're gonna have a new gymnasium. We know that we're going to have a new auxiliary gym. Here's our wrestling room. Our new weight room is right here with some cardio equipment. And then we have the stadium that's in place. What you're going to see as we talk about the projects tonight and makes it super cool is how seamlessly the potential for this Tiger Performance Center here and how the Aquatic Center come into these projects together. You know, a great example of that is to save cost and planning, they will share concession stands here, they'll share restrooms, and they have locker room spaces that they can share. So that cuts down the cost and makes it very much more affordable for everything. As we look at the entire Tiger Performance Center and where it fits into the plants from the outside, you're able to see right here is the Tiger Performance Center uh, next to that. Here's that new structure that you see as you drive in 27th going up the auditorium, the schools in the back. And then of course, this is the picture from the north where you're seeing in the aquatic center and how that fills in. So you ask yourself, why do we need those, these different things? So I have a series of videos that people have been good enough to come in and give testimonials and information on. And we're gonna go ahead and go through some of those and let them tell you in their own words and stories some of the things that happens and how we benefit from this. The indoor pool at Holmes is not ADA compliant, with narrow stairs leading to the worn out bleachers in the upper level. The peat pool is much smaller, with low ceilings and deteriorating gutters. Neither pool has adequate warm up and cool down areas, and the mechanicals are aging, making it more and more difficult to find replacement parts. The pools were built in 1977, so it is hard to find some parts. Uh, the school does an amazing job trying to keep them up and running. They're old. We've done a great job over all of these years, um, keeping the pools up and providing a great home for all of our aquatics programs, but we're not going to be able to do that much longer. They're very much reaching the end of their useful lives. When there is a closure at one of the pools, it can disrupt or cancel programs and activities. Sometimes we can shift from one pool to the other, so we've been very lucky that way. 
Uh, there was a period where both of them were down uh, for repairs and we just had to cancel everything. So what are some of the things that the Aquatic Center includes? Uh, this video helps you with some of that. The new high school campus creates an opportunity to provide a much needed upgrade to the city and school's indoor aquatic facilities. The proposed indoor aquatic center will include two pools. The competition pool will be a 10 lane, 25 yard by 25 meter pool. There will be a larger pool deck and spectator seating for 500, making it possible for Cedar Falls High School to host larger swim meets. We'll be able to have conference meets and regional swim meets and we can bring in lots of visitors into the area and that will increase revenues for our, our local businesses. Here are some additional features that are going with it. The Community Aquatic Center includes a multi-purpose training room, men's, women's and family locker rooms and two one meter diving boards. The second pool will be a four lane 25 yard pool for lessons and recreation. When those winter swimming lesson registrations open up online, that they fill up just like that. And we've got to make sure that we can expand that program and make it more available to the community. So now with that new uh, pool, it will allow us to do some of those things. The smaller pool will have separate temperature controls, allowing for warmer temperatures, which are more appealing for senior and youth aquatics programs and lessons. So finally here, we want to look at a few of the community benefits as it pertains to the aquatic center. A separate entrance will allow the community to utilize the pool during school hours for activities such as lap swim, aqua aerobics, and other swim programming. One of the things that we will be able to do is have the pool open to the community during the daytime because it's going to have a separate entrance from the high school. It's going to benefit our community as a whole, it's going to benefit our seniors all the way down to our uh, toddlers and young families across our region. And this is another fantastic example of that synergy that we have of people caring about their community, making sure that things get done for the future of our community and for the kids that grow up here. And last, we have Grace Frerichs, who's uh, one of our state champion All-American swimmers, and Coach Zerbeck, the head coach, that gives just a quick couple testimonials about how it impacts them. The new pool will provide a better environment and more opportunities for swim lessons. It will give competitive swimmers better conditions and more space to train, along with more space for lap swimming. Cedar Falls has a rich tradition when it comes to swimming-related activities. Sadly, the pool's lives are coming to an end, but that does not mean that our excellent tradition has to. A new pool would allow us to expand the already prestigious programs that we have. From a high school standpoint, in order for us to be successful, we need young kids trained to swim and enjoy the water. That will then join a strong and flourishing club team that will age into high school swimming and help us to have the top program in the state yet again. So it's great, great information from different people on the Aquatic Center. Um, in general, what everybody needs to know in our community, and I know everybody in this room already knows it because you've expressed interest and you've followed this, but the reality is we have a pool at Pete and Holmes that have outlived their life expectancy. And for us as a community to pretend that that's not happening and everything's great uh, would be irresponsible. And fortunately, with a combination of our administration and the city and the jump in group, they have already planned and are working to make sure that we have a, a transition where we don't find ourselves as a community without an indoor pool. And we cannot rely on University of Northern Iowa. Uh, obviously they have their programs and so forth. So we have to make sure that we do what we need to do to make sure that we get take care of this aquatic center. At the end, we'll talk about funding, and you'll see some of the great work that Jump In Group has already done. You'll see some of the commitments that we already have when it comes to the Aquatic Center. As we move to the Tiger Performance Center, which is the second part of the project, you know, we, we look at the Aquatic Center, as, if we're being honest, as a must-have because of our community and the situation we're in with the two pools. Look at the Tiger Performance Center, this is a definite need and a want, and it's a dream that we've had as coaches forever. I remember sitting down with Coach Remmer and a lot of the coaches uh, 15 years ago talking about what a performance center could do for our community and for our programs. And, and we've had that dream. And fortunately, when we sat down with the architects and they said, 
tell us what you want in these facilities. Um, we had all the standard things that people want, but we also said we have a dream to help our generations for the next 50 years to be as good as anybody. And that's the Tiger Performance Center. And thankfully, our administration and our architects took that advice seriously. And one of the things I'm most impressed with, and I think you will be as we go through this, is how they've worked this potential into the new high school to give us this opportunity. Some people say, well, why, why do you need it? Uh, are there things like that? Just within 30 miles, we have the Waterloo Sportsplex is already in place. Most of you have been in there. Obviously, the Tiger Performance Center isn't that massive, but it's a similar, it's a similar idea. Over in Waverly, as you all know, if you have kids and you go into youth tournaments, they have what they call a performance center, which is essentially a weight room, but it's right next to uh, an indoor facility that has a track, has three or four courts, the weight room is so thin it. It's, it's not out of line to look across the state to see new people doing things for us to have this vision and dream. So what I want to do real quick is give this fly through and talk through this with everybody, make sure you have a good view of an understanding of it. As you come in the Performance Center, obviously it's handicap accessible. You're coming into the doors there. Right away you'll know, notice up front there's a meetings place for people if they have youth or kids doing different things that they can wait and hang out. Notice that once you get past that front area, the entire facility is an open span for you to do. Here's one of the really neat things. Notice these two doors. That's to our existing weight room. That's one of the key parts of this plan. That wall right there, to have the vision when they put in that wall ahead of time to already put in the footers, footings, I should say, to support this structure is already in place. I mean, that planning has taken place. Those walls are designed to be stackable to make it in place. That saves money. There you can see the courts that can be used for volleyball, for basketball, for tennis. You come around, you got a 40 by five, or 45 yard by 45 yard turf area. Of course, you have the track. But you're coming up, what I think is one of the coolest things is the way it ties in with our aquatic center. And you come in and you have this meeting area in between that can be used for both facilities and it looks over that aquatic center and ties those two great facilities together. And also where, like I said, they can share their restrooms, they can share the concession stands, they have locker rooms of their same. And as you come around here, you'll notice that the nets that come down, we have baseball and softball that can do fielding on that turf. Of course, it'll impact football and soccer, the nets for help for golf, for baseball hitting and everything. But notice how when you come around and you come out this tunnel, you come into our new stadium. And, and I, for one, am going to have uh, chills when I see our, our Tigers come out of that tunnel for the first time and be able to come onto our new field to, to compete. And then, of course, you'll turn around and you'll see the actual stadium. One of the takeaways that I've been so excited about and our coaches have been is the opportunity has been created because of the design. So now we just need to follow through on what that is. I have several testimonials here because I know these people can give their input better than I can share it up here. As a physical education instructor here at Cedar Falls High School, I know the Tiger Performance Center will have an immediate impact on our, our curriculum. We have limited space right now to, to have all of our classes do the things they need to do. For example, we have to do our speed and agility training out in the, in the hallways before or after school. The Performance Center will give us the space and the surface necessary to be able to implement that right into our strength and conditioning programs. How can it impact robotics in our music department potentially? The Tiger Performance Center is a great opportunity for our Cedar Falls High School robotics program. The space that it would provide would allow us to test our robots on a full practice field. It would also allow us to host off-season events or scrimmages where we could invite teams from around the state to join us in Cedar Falls and test our robots each year. The Tiger Performance Center would be an additional help for our band program. The Tiger Marching Band rehearses outside, except when it's raining and then we have nowhere to go, so we're stuck inside. We would love to have the opportunity to take advantage of indoor rehearsal space uh, when it's 105 or when it's 30 below. We could still get something done with the kids. Our color guard would be able to use it and we'd be able to do some marching fundamentals as well, so it'd be a huge plus for the Tiger Marching Band. 
Here's Dirk Holmwood and Project Lead the Way and how it can impact that. The Tiger Performance Center will allow us the space to introduce aerospace engineering, including the flying of drones in a controlled space. In addition, the space will provide us an opportunity to host various competitions and the testing of student-generated solutions to course projects. Coach Schultz with men's basketball. I'm so excited for what the Tiger Performance Center would bring to our basketball program, not only in terms of what we do for our current athletes, but also to enhance and expand our youth program throughout the year and what we do with our summer programs uh, in the summer months. And back to Coach Remmer. As the head football coach here at Cedar Falls, uh, I believe the Performance Center will have a huge impact uh, year-round on our football program. Uh, during the season, we'll be able to utilize the turf surfaces to have practices when, uh, when we have inclement weather. Uh, right now, we have to, to use the athletic budget to rent the, the fit courts, the Waterloo Sportsplex, or the Unidome uh, to have a practice when we can't go outside. The Performance Center will also be a game changer for, for our football program in, in the off season. Right now, we don't have space to be able to, to train our kids uh, with football drills. And the uh, surface, the track surface, along with the turf surface, is going to give us a chance to be able to, to have seven on sevens, run pass routes, and be able to teach football related skills during the winter months. It's not only going to impact uh, our immediate high school students, but also the younger kids in the community where we'll be able to bring them in and, and also do drill work with the younger kids. And Coach Homewood on track and field. Despite the success of the men's and women's track and field programs, our technical events, including the field events and hurdles, have suffered due to lack of practice space. The Tiger Performance Center will provide us the opportunity to schedule specific workouts in a controlled environment to focus on technique. In addition, the space will provide us an opportunity to teach our younger athletes and host clinics to teach them the proper technique. As a softball player and track athlete, I wasn't able to train the way I would have liked to because of our limited facilities and space. The ability to do fielding for softball and actually throw for track would have made a big difference in my performances. It's hard to improve as a soccer player. When you face risk of injury and lack of flexibility without the space and proper surface to train on. So obviously that's just a snapshot from several different programs. Um, you're all very intelligent in here. You can see the benefits of the Tiger Performance Center and how, back, how much that will impact us among those multiple programs. But the other thing that we can talk about uh, again as we wrap up is the excitement of how it's already designed and ready to go within to our facilities. What are some of the other additional benefits? You know, obviously you have the walking track or running, depending on how you want to use it. You have special events that we can host in there. The addition of the Tiger Performance Center, along with our new gym, our new auxiliary gym, is going to let us host uh, a multitude of tournaments. You know, you can think of youth basketball tournaments, youth wrestling tournaments, youth volleyball tournaments. You mentioned the robotics tournaments that you can have. The number of things that we can do and host to give opportunities to our next 50 years worth of students is incredible. And then also you think about those events bring in dollars and tourism to, to our community. And, and we need that more than anything. I think about the lost revenue. Uh, as an athletic director, we had the privilege of hosting the MVC Conference Championship meet in swimming last year. Well, guess what? We held it at Linmar. We were not able to hold it at our own facility. That was a little embarrassing and honestly expensive to rent a facility because we weren't capable of hosting it here. And I can assure you that that happens in a lot of our facilities right now. And with a new high school and the potential of these new aquatic center and performance center, we're going to have the ability with that not being, we're going to be able to go the other direction with it. So how, how do we do it? Right? Everybody's on the edge of your seat there, right? How do, we, how do we make this happen? What are their plans? What are their fundraising options? So first, I know this is slide is hard to read, but you'll all be excited to know that as you go out, we have this handout for you to take. One of the opportunities is in naming rights. The naming rights can help fund a lot of these projects. We have about $6 million in naming rights uh, available to do. As a former industrial technology teacher, I think it would be amusing if in one of the collaborative spaces, the future industrial tech teachers had to go into my room to do their collaboration. They would find that amusing, but I, I want to make that happen. An example in the naming rights, uh, Coach Remmer and I and others have talked about 
can we name the football stadium to honor legendary coach Pat Mitchell and all that he's done for our programs over the years. Um, when he passed, unfortunately, we weren't able to really do a lot because we were in this transition. Now we have an opportunity to reach out to alumni and say, let's honor Coach Mitchell with this. Uh, I mentioned the teacher collaboration space option. Uh, you may have a state championship team that says, we want, we want to recognize our state championship team forever by having a locker room named after them, for example. You may have a loved one that you want to recognize as an individual where you do a naming rights. Uh, the class of 1976, I've been in contact with them, and they're looking to do something as a naming right opportunity. So those are just examples of the naming right. Once individuals give, there's two walls that you can have, donor walls, one is going to be in the aquatic center, and then the other one will be in the high school and uh, opportunity for those that give to have their recognition be in place. Here's what everybody wants to know. What, what's, what are the bids? How's it going to be? What's the construction cost? So we do have some good data to go by because Dubuque recently built a new pool. Linmar built a new pool. I uh, want to point out, people, people will say, well, why don't you have cost already? Well. In, in order, it, it takes money, obviously, to send these things out to bid. And, and you don't want to waste money until you're committed to the project. Once we know that the funding is there for the different projects, we can move to bids, which then moves and gets the projects going. And we're very close on the aquatic center at happening. So what's the current cost on the aquatic center? Uh, we think it's 18 million about now. That's our guess. That's up a little bit, obviously, because construction costs have gone up uh, the last year or so. But that's also an example if, as a community, we don't act, that's going to turn into 20 million to 22 million to 24 million. So obviously, we need to act. Now, what's exciting there is out of that 18 million, thanks to the jump in group, our school district, and the city, we are. School district pledging $8 million. The city has uh, committed $5.1 million so far, and then the donations so far are at $2.1 million. So we're at $15.2 million on this project to make it a go. So we're real close on that. The Tiger Performance Center, we think right about now that's probably going to be an $8 to $9 million structure. Doc, Dr. Petit tells me $9 million to be safe, and I'm, I think $8 million because I'm fragile and I need to know what's going to happen. Um, but I put his number up there because he's my boss. Um, but, but, but the thing here that I look at is the shell. Um, I truly believe in my heart, and the coaches have talked, if on the fall of 24, we have the walls there, the roof there, the floor, we have the shell of the building in place, we know that that's going to happen. So what's it going to take to get the shell of the project? $5 million. Uh, that's, that's what we're estimating. So if you look at the entire project, the scope of both things, um, the first goal we would have would be $7 million. So that's, that's $2.8 uh, $2 million to guarantee that we have the aquatic center and $5 million to guarantee that we get the shell of the performance center. Overall, we think probably 11.8 million to have both structures, which is intimidating for, for an average guy like myself. But I put up there something that makes me extremely happy, and I know you're happy because I can tell, is 27 million is what we're going to have in two structures. So you consider 27 million dollars worth of projects, and we're down to 11.8 to make this dream happen. That, that's where it gets fun. Opportunity. That's, that's the first thing I say over and over. The architects, our administration, the city, they gave us this opportunity to have these two great structures. It would have been easy to say, we don't have the money, we're not going to spend anything on the design, we're not going to incorporate them. You look at the plan that we talked about and see how both projects are seamlessly put together and how cool that will be for our community. It, it's it's a happy situation. Uh, the naming right opportunities, as we mentioned, six million dollars potential to do that. That's a way for us together to get the word out. 
Uh, pledges can be done over three to five years. My wife and I sat down, we know we're gonna make a pledge, we're gonna do it over five years so we can maximize our giving and, uh, and do it with pride, knowing that uh, someday, uh, maybe my grandchildren will use that facility. But I know as a person of Cedar Falls, I wanna make sure that I'm a part of making this happen. We're all in it together. Um, if, if Troy Becker and, and Brad Remmert are the only one leading the charge, or the coaches, it just isn't gonna happen. If you look at the the group and what they've done to come together on the pool, that's a model of what needs to happen and continue with the pool, but also what we need to do with the Tiger Performance Center, where we come together as a group, and not with one or two individuals, but with groups of individuals. And I'm super excited to see a lot of young parents in here of elementary kids who have the vision to know that this facility be used by their, their, by their children. Getting actual bid and constructions, I've mentioned we need to get a certain amount of money in place so we can move forward. Uh, I'm sure that all of you feel as I do, the crane is there, right? We might as well be putting up walls, the crane's already there. Let's, let's have a great year and jump into this and really have a great time here in terms of pushing the fundraising now to, to get lower construction costs and to get this in place in the fall of 24. And that's where it comes in on the fall of 24. The goal is to have the shell of both buildings. And of course, you guys realize by now, once the pool goes, it's gonna go. And we have to have that because we're so close. And the lastly, as I've said many times, this, this impact and opportunity we have is for 50 years of students and community. It's, it's not, it's not a, a few year thing, it's 50 years of making great things for us and making it happen for everybody. And finally, for questions. What do you think is the mix between community and school use of the facilities? I think it'll be a combination, uh, and I'm not sure what the blend will be. We know now that community use of our pools is slanted heavily towards community, um, but we know that that is an important piece as we look at just the overall usage across our community of, of the pools. Um, I would say the Tiger Performance Center will be really interesting just to see how that is used by our community. We certainly want it to be embraced as a community, but when Troy talked about, Mr. Becker talked about the number of activities, um, weekend tournaments, uh, robotics events that can come into that, and you call those community events because if there are two days, Saturday and Sunday, the amount of overnight stays, I could see that having a very heavily weighted slant towards community usage too, just of the number of times and hours that that will be utilized during the weekend. So I, I would hope that it's 50-50, you 60-40, know, um, but it's going to both facilities will be utilized almost 24-7, 365 days out of the year is our intent. One of the interesting questions that I get, and I, ironically, people use this as an argument to tell me that we don't need to have them, is, well, what are you gonna do? This team's gonna want it, and this team's gonna want it, and you're gonna have this. So their argument is, it's gonna be so busy I can't schedule it. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's gonna be a nightmare to schedule that because it's so valuable. I wanna ask Tracy real quick, touch on, uh, just so the average person here doesn't know, talk about how the community you is, you know, just talk about the community use for the pool, because everybody knows our competitive teams use it, but just talk about the community aspect for the uh, aquatic center. Well, the aquatic center uh, currently is basically operated seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day. Um, it's heavily used by the community. It's used for competitive swimming, lap swimming, swim lessons. The scuba folks use it. Um, but the thing is, we have a lot of people that want to use it that currently just can't get the space. So for example, uh, we have the triathletes. They would really like an opportunity to use it more. I know the cross country teams would like to use it more. Um, we also have the scuba folks that would like to utilize it more. And we have a group of kids that started a, a water polo group and they would just love to have water polo tournaments there. So uh, there's just so many opportunities for the community to use this space. And you know, with that separate entrance, it's gonna give us so many more opportunities because then the community can utilize the pool during the school hours. 
And that is key because that ultimately gives us another 70 hours per week, uh, possibly, for pool utilization by the community. Now granted, the school's gonna use it some of that time, but a lot of that, I think, will be up for the community's use. So it's, it's gonna be a great thing for our community in terms of activities. Thank you. And, and I should mention that all the video you saw in there was of Holmes Junior High. Uh, there, there's a difference between showing the need that we have in the community and just embarrassing yourself if we show Pete. Uh, so we didn't want that. Um, that was an inside thought. Sorry about that, Dr. Petit. Um, there's a need there. Uh, other questions? What happens to those old pools after, I'm all for the new one. Sure. Very much needed. But what happens to the homes and Pete pools after? Great, great question. The question, what happens to the old pools as we do the new pool? Yeah, we've had plans in place to utilize those spaces for classroom spaces, so they would be filled in. Uh, they're great shells. The, you know, they are least, uh, less expensive to be able to add space and room for students. Uh, utilizing those spaces are already built and, and have great height, uh, room, and, and opportunities for student use. All right. Yeah, our junior highs, again, we just have, uh, we're growing as a school district, and that's so exciting uh, where many districts across the state are not. Uh, so our junior highs, as we look to the future to make sure that we have the right spaces, the right amount of room, it's necessary to build out that, that capacity for students. So, Monica, if someone has a gift or donation they want to make, talk, talk about how the foundation is part of that. Uh, so we accept the gifts uh, for both of these projects through the Cedar Falls Schools Foundation. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, um, so any gift gets a tax receipt uh, with their thank you. We are located in uh, First Bank on Main Street, so um, gifts could be dropped off there or mailed. We also have some online options for giving as well. Good thing. Thank you so much. Coach Remmert. Inform the people how tight the athletic director is about renting facilities and what you've had to do this last fall. I'm going to stand up and get those lights out of my eyes if I can here. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where we've had to rent other facilities, and uh, the Sportsplex has been awesome for us to be able to go down there, but you're competing with the Waterloo schools to get that space. And when you're talking $150 an hour, it, it, it adds up. And, and to get into the dome, well, that's a little bit more expensive, and, and uh, it, it makes it challenging to get your teams prepared. And, and uh, to have this space with the Performance Center is not only to give the, the football team an opportunity, but also sports. I think of the, the, the teams that are trying to get ready now for the spring uh, and summer sports and, and uh, finding space. It's, it's hard to do. Uh, maybe Mr. Homewood could put his, his tractor, his snow plow away. He's out there two or three times a week plowing lanes. And those kids are out there in the, in the cold running there. If we had a, a specific facility like that, it, it's, it's going to change a lot of the things the way our, our kids train it. It's not just one or two sports. It's all sports. We talk golf of being able to drop nets down and, and, and hit golf balls so they can get ready for a spring season. Uh, tennis. Uh, so this isn't just a one or two sport deal with the Performance Center. It's, uh, it's, it's everybody and everybody will, will want to use that once we get that thing up and going. Absolutely. And one thing I'll always remember is two years ago, uh, we we're in the state championship game in football. Uh, 5A state championship game with our great team, great coaches, great athletes. And we had to practice on that turf field at Robinson Dresser, that little softball turf field. We have our 4A football team preparing for the championship game on that little infield because that's the only space we had. It, 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 was, it, was, it was so unfortunate. But to the coaches' credit, as always, they adapted and overcome and, and obviously did a great job. Other questions, yes? How do our current facilities compare to some other schools like Linmar and Waukee? <laughs> you want to speak in terms of the pool? The question, how do, how do our current facilities compare to other schools? Uh, our current facilities compare very poorly compared to other of our peers in the area. Um, some of the other schools that have built new pools in the recent uh, in the recent five years, our Cedar Rapids has built a pool. 
Um, Iowa City has built a pool, Des Moines has built a pool. Ames, Mason City, Waukee, they're all in process of building new aquatic centers. And the truth is, we just have to build this facility, I mean, just to not fall behind. I mean, we're in Cedar Falls, we're, we need to be proud of our community. We are the type of community that, um, you know, should have these basic amenities for our community members to enjoy. So it's a very important thing for us to have. Yeah, and, and um, the facilities that, that we have, I, I guess I want I want to give this analogy. We were desperate 10 to 12 years ago. Uh, Coach Remert and I and the, and the administration got together, actually did a survey to see what was going to take to renovate Hauser Stadium right out here. And it was desperate and needed to be done. And what the survey told us was the community would be, it would, they would not necessarily support a new school if they saw that we put even more money in the existing structure and the existing field. So the community already at that time recognized that we're growing and we're gonna outgrow this building. So why put millions of dollars into a structure that you're gonna be leaving? So we have had our hands tied because of that reality ever since. And it's a, it's a reality that I agreed with and the coaches agreed with because we knew we needed to have this new high school, which thanks to our community is now is happening. Uh, other questions? Yes. How do you address the security issue with the community using the spaces during the day in addition to students and school running? Sure, great, great question. How do you address the security issues uh, that happen with those facilities being open to the community? Yeah, with, with the design, and it's, it's a really good, uh, thorough, thoughtful design, and Vision has done a, just a tremendous job working with us on that. The pool with the exterior entrance parking lot that's separate from the school entrances and parking lots allows the community to come in, which then also allows us to be able to have doorways and access into the building, into the Tiger Performance Center that wouldn't be accessible uh, at those times. So the security and safety would be um, there in place. Uh, we would also just set up the schedule so when our students will be utilizing the pool, that's an unscheduled time that the city could not use it. So safety and security would be at, be at the forethought, uh, forefront of our decisions with that, but we know that that would certainly be a concern and, and we've thought through that very thoroughly. Thanks. Other questions? Yes. Is this only available, like funded privately? You know, the school was voted on for a bond issue multiple times. Correct. Is there a possibility that this could be like a publicly funded type thing through like a city's vote, like a school bond So when we went through the bond process, um, we didn't really even have in the forefront of our mind the Tiger Performance Center. Uh, so the Tiger Performance Center really came from leaders uh, um, design development to say this is something that would be great to, to, to have for our community, for our students, for our economic development as we look at bringing dollars into the region. Um, the pool we knew needed to be a community conversation because of the the amount of use that it we we have in our pools from the community that it needed to be a partnership with us with the city with with other uh, entities could this go out for a bond yes uh, we think that with the dollars allocated towards uh, these projects especially the pool project from the school from the city from some of our private donors will be able to allow it to get done quicker uh, anytime you have a bond referendum in Iowa you need a 60 percent plus super majority uh, I'm a former social studies teacher, and we would say during election cycles, anytime you get 60% of the voters to vote one way, it's a landslide election. It's just very hard sometimes to get to that level. So we think knowing that we have $27 million in construction that will be taking place and asking just to get everything off the ground, $7 million in fundraising, we believe we can get there probably much quicker than a potential bond referendum. A lot of people don't know or don't realize in 1977 when, do, when we received a bond to build the two current pools, it took three bond referendums to even get the $1 million to be able to get those pools built at that time frame. So it's always just a slow, hard process at times. So you shared the amount that was sure. before. Like if there was a timeline 
to reach that amount, what would that be in order to stay on track with the high school? So we're opening in the fall of 24. Uh, so, you know, the sooner we can get money for the aquatic center and the bids out, then we have a chance, I think, definitely to have the shell for the aquatic center in place. For, I mean, yeah, for the pool. Um, that's, that's where, uh, as a selfish person here with the Tiger Performance Center including in that, I feel like, and I say the, the window's open, it's very important that we have a really good, aggressive year now because what I would hope to do is come back in the in the, this time next year, in the early 2023, and have enough funding that we say, yeah, we can get that to bid now. And then hopefully, if we take it to bid, that we can speed up that process and get some things done. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of where we're at. I, I see the next year as being critical for both projects if we hope to have those even remotely in place when we're moving into the new school in the fall of 24. Correct. Yeah, very much so, and, and I'd also add that our intent is to look at a kind of a bidding window for the pool of, of May, maybe June, depending on where we're at. Uh, as we backwards map all of the timelines, if we want the pool open at the time the school opens, the construction window is about a 12 to 14 month construction window, mobilization of, of contractors, you know, because they might not be the ones that are on site that get the bid, because we're required for open bidding laws to, to do that in a certain way. Uh, we know that that's kind of the window. The Tiger Performance Center is a, is a roughly, just for the shell, about an eight month to, to a 12 month window. Um, backing that up, we'd have to look probably late fall potentially to, to look at those bidding windows to be able to have that in place by the time the school opens. And that's, that's why that initial goal I mentioned is so important. You know, if we can get that initial goal and get the shell in place, then, you know, the rest of it will happen. We're currently at 1,600 students, approximately 9 through 12, and we know over the next 10 years we're going to grow approximately 500 students. We currently have 80 to 85 percent of people involved in activities in our, in our high school. Uh, as you, all of you know, uh, the kids that we have tend to be very active, and they're, they're active in multiple ways, so that, that's been a great thing for, for Cedar Falls. Yeah. How does the funding, fundraising efforts go? Like, do you give specifically to the pool? Do you give to the performance center? Is it a lump? Right now, we do have two funds set up. We have a pool fund, and then we have what I kind of call high school naming opportunities, Tiger Performance Center Stadium, because those are kind of all naming opportunities within um, the new high school stadium and Tiger Performance Center. So two separate funds. Um, you would dictate which one. Um, I know we do, we have a number of um, very generous donors that support both projects, um, but certainly if you feel passionate about one versus the other. And uh, the, the, this, you know, when my wife and I sat down, we know we want to be equal opportunity people, so we know we're going to fund both projects. We asked the foundation about that, and then we can designate a certain amount, and we can actually end up on both donor walls, depending on our amount. So that, that's one thing that we want to do, is we want to make sure we represent and be represented in both projects. Sure. You know, um, with regard to the pool, I just want to point out that time is really of the essence. Um, Troy brought up that our pools currently in Cedar Falls are inadequate now and in the future. Well, all the pools in the, in the Cedar Valley are many of them. Many of them were built in the 70s, not just Holmes and Pete, but also West High School and uh, Central Junior High, the YMCA, the YWCA was built in 1924. We do have some new pools. We have UNI, we have the Western Home, but those are not for public use. The only public use one we have is a sportsplex, and that's nearly not big enough for all of our programs. Someone asked a question about PEAT and the utilization of PEAT for additional classroom space. As you can see at PEAT, there's, there's a portable in front. So 
in the next one to two years, they're gonna need to close that peat pool for that classroom space. So we need to basically get this new pool up and running or else we're gonna have to cut a significant number of programs or eliminate them. I mean, if you just do the math, if you cut the pools in half in the Cedar Valley, half of the things are gonna have to go away. So we just don't want that to happen and uh, we don't wanna really have to cut anything and we wanna be able to offer all the services we currently do and more with the new pool. Great points. being involved for our, our youth programs, for just students who maybe aren't in those varsity programs, does just being involved in extracurriculars have a benefit outside of, say, a state championship? I'll let you take the second part because I'm greedy with the athletics part. Um, we've had tremendous success, there's no question, and, and some, some could argue why, why do we need this because you've had success, you're winning state championships and different things. Um, as a former track coach, uh, I'm a little bit tired of trying to adapt and overcome all the time. We had a state runner-up shuttle relay team last year in our, in our girls program that has to work out up in the hallway, third floor. They put down a rubber mat and they go one at a time. And there's no question when you look at the team that wins it every year is Waukee and you go to their facility and their kids are hurling year round in an indoor facility. It makes a difference. The kids have an opportunity to succeed because they have better facilities. It's just the way it is. I watch what Coach Remert does with our athletes in the summer and different periods of time. You saw the video with the kids in that weight room, how crowded that is. Uh, undersized, but we just have to do what we have to do. So number one, as a coach and, and coaches, we know that this is gonna positively impact our programs and let us be even more successful. We, we wanna compete with everybody in the state, Southeast Polk, Waukee, everybody. And we feel like our kids deserve the opportunity to have those types of facilities. I dream of the day of hosting these great Tiger tournaments in the various sports where we can have things go on. I mean, I look at the Martin Brothers teams that are put together. Why wouldn't we have a great tournament for our own youth that are on those teams right here in our facilities? So you can do the other part. The second part of the question is really easy to answer. Research is crystal clear. Um, there's statistical significance. Students involved in activities have better attendance, have higher achievement, have higher success rates as they go on to college and career pathways. Um, being involved in activities builds better young adults, which leads to better adulthood successes. Yeah, I, I could not agree more, and that's why we felt it was extremely important in our promotional video and even tonight to enter, to have Mr. Swartley talk about the robotics program and what it could do, uh, Coach Homewood uh, and the project Lead the Way, what it could do there. Uh, we know that once the facility is in place, uh, you build it, they will come. It's going to impact all those programs, just as you mentioned, and give us an opportunity. It's going to be super fun to host this massive robotics competition here in the area sometimes and watch them pull in with their semis and all their stuff and set up their gears. And how, what will that do for our engineering? And, and, and we also know that Coach Home was working hard to see if there's some grants or funding or something that recognize that and can help support the project because of it. You'll have a much more scientific answer than I have. Here. I have done that for the pool. <laughs> um, basically, I, I talked to the folks at Lynn Marr, and I got the numbers of, of the kind of people they draw for their um, events. 
And basically, we can get another 3,000 people to the area um, with the addition of this natorium. And that correlates to about $1 million in revenues to the area businesses and into the community. And you know that's just for one year. You know This is a 50-year asset. If that's a million dollars this year, that's going to be $50 million over the course of this asset. So it's going to have a significant impact in this community. And now I'll give you the least scientific explanation. Like many of you, I brought two daughters up through the program. Have you ever gone to Ames for a soccer tournament or a basketball tournament and you call the hotel, hey, I need hotels for Friday, no, nope, we're booked. You call 15 hotels, they're all booked, right? You guys have done that with your kids. I'm like, holy cow, how can a whole city be filled and then you go to the soccer field or the basketball tournament and you see all those people and then they're all eating at our restaurants. And they're all in our hotels. Massive impact. Those of you that have kids in these sports, you know what I'm talking about. The fact that you showed up shows that you're interested, and we, we certainly appreciate that. And as I mentioned, the reason we wanted to have this event, have Channel 15 here, obviously. We've got some, the Courier's doing an article. We've got some news coverage is we want anybody and everybody, when we talk about the Aquatic Center in Cedar Falls and the Performance Center in Cedar Falls, that they go, oh yeah, I saw that. That's gonna be awesome. Because that's what it's gonna take is just to have a massive awareness in our community about the benefits and what it's gonna do for us for the next 50 years. And that's where all of you come into play. And, and I hope that you leave here energized a little bit and excited about it and leave here with the attitude of, we have to make that happen. Uh, and if we, if we do that collectively, then I think it will. Thank you so much for coming. As you leave, appreciate it. As you leave, there's some information out there on tables. There's some key people out there. Certainly these people are available if you have other individual questions you want to ask. And uh, we will super appreciate that. And again, thank you very much. Let's go on it. Let's go. Let's go.